A medical device company based in Maple Grove was just fined thousands of dollars for air quality violations. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency says Boston Scientific added production equipment twice in 2022 that increased its potential to emit pollutants. However, the company did not get the appropriate air permits before installing the equipment. The second piece of equipment caused the Maple Grove facility to emit methanol emissions above the limit in September 2022. MPCA staff confirmed that Boston Scientific reduced its production until it could install a temporary vapor recovery unit in 2023. Boston Scientific paid the over $11,000 civil penalty and obtained the required permit to cover its added equipment. With the holidays coming up, Metro Transit wants to remind people that buses and trains won't run on their usual schedule. All Metro Transit buses, along with Blue and Green Line trains, will run on Sunday schedules on Christmas and New Year's Day. Generally, that means trains and buses will come every 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the route. On our busiest routes, we're still going to have service that's very frequent. So we might be shifting by, you know, four or five minutes here and there, but it's still going to be coming many times an hour, which is a good thing. So if people are accustomed to just walking out to the stop, they're not going to notice that big a difference. For an up-to-date schedule, people should go to the Metro Transit website. Meanwhile, if you plan on going out on New Year's Eve, Metro Transit is providing free rides on buses and trains after 6 in the evening. Just before going on winter break, students at a Brooklyn Park Elementary School took part in an epic competition against a group of elite athletes from Champlin Park High School. Year after year, our Oxbow students really step up to the challenge and they have never lost a contest during our relay race. It's amazing. Uh, we love it. For the first time in four years, Oxbow Creek Elementary held its much anticipated relay race event. Students here participated in a food drive just before Thanksgiving, and the two classes that brought in the most food were given the opportunity to challenge a group of Champlin Park athletes in a relay race. But don't let the size and athleticism of the Champlin Park athletes fool you. In the first of the two races held on Friday, the second graders came out on top. It's a lot harder than it looks, like just jumping over the big towers and then you gotta run in there super quick so it's, it's hard to beat them. I was trying to run fast but that's not the key, it's just trying your best. Not like super hard, just like just trying your best. During the food drive, the Oxbow Creek students collected 4,500 items of food for Second Harvest Heartland in Brooklyn Park. The winter solstice was this Thursday. It's also known as the shortest day of the year. Loose Line Brewing in Plymouth celebrated the occasion with storytelling and a few limited edition beers. You see, on the longest night of the year, we must set out a great feast for the trolls and they come into our home, they eat everything, they drink all the beer, so those of you here would be in terrible trouble. Storyteller Laura Parker embraces the dichotomy between sunlight and shadows. We need light, we need dark. We're in the longest night, but you know what? The sun is going to rise tomorrow. We've been living through darkness and merging into light, coming into light for millennia. And we've been telling stories about it and celebrating it and thriving. Finbor lay down behind the stove where it was warm and curled himself up and fell asleep. She was at Loose Line Brewing in Plymouth on Thursday. And as they walked, Finbor could hear the snow squeaking underneath his feet. Telling ancient folk tales and a few of her own. For years I have stayed up all the night on solstice night. I will do it tonight. This is winter solstice from 2022. For the brewery, the early sunset was good reason to bring the community together. Generally the time of year people are, are doing their own thing. They're with their family. Uh, they may be traveling. Uh, generally we have lots of snow. People don't want to go out. People don't want to do things. Um, so that's why this year is especially special for us. So right here we have Winter Solstice 2023. It's really smooth, a really easy drinking. The brewery had several dark beers on tap to pair with the warm winter night. Their Winter Solstice Stout was aged in whiskey barrels with hazelnut and vanilla bean. We just try to push that boundary and get you to go that next step. Create a big beer that's really complex and really fun to drink. Their Neon Moon Stout brought less traditional flavors to the mix. It's aged with smoked and candied pecans. It gets that nice, like, tacky, sticky sweetness going on. Uh, then we age the beer on those. So the beer itself uh, has a nice, uh, nice sweetness to it from the maple syrup, but then also a good smoky flavor. But I love this story because it is so 
true. It feels true in my heart. But above all, the event was about bringing people together. Beer is about fun. Uh, beer is about community. It should be sharing beers with your friends. So it should be something like, hey guys, look, I got this cool bottle. Like, let's all share it. And that's, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, and her family had beauty over solstice and Christmas. And remembering that every long night has a morning. I hope that when they go home, they realize that there's balance, that there's joy, and that they are just part of this continuous line of people celebrating the return of life. In Plymouth, Kevin Miller, CCX News.